right. So what I wanted to try, I've got the, a couple of years of the amp steel. I thought it'd be a fun one to break because it's a pretty high strength um, uh, line. And what I did was I just did um, Bolins in the top and bottom with no half itch. Um, and um, as a point of interest for anybody who's a, a, a not nerd out there, I did do left hand Bolins as is my habit from years of being trained that way, sailing before theater. Um, but uh, I just want to see if uh, we will, what kind of capacity we're going to see. You know, we know that we're supposed to be derating the rope. We know that that not supposed to derate it. And what we don't know is, is it going to slip? Uh, if you talk to the manufacturers of this rope, the best way for it to terminate it is, of course, splice. That's not always practical in a the theater application um, for various reasons. It's not hard to learn how to splice amp sealer technology or those things. Um, and there's a lot of pretty good videos online. Um, but for our applications, knots are often um, the easiest way, especially if we're just using them quickly and temporarily. Um, but what does that mean? You know, what do we learn from that? So that's what I want to break first. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what I've got set up is a load cell. Um, the actual cell is above us here, uh, so you can't see it. Um, uh, but the readout's there. I'm trying to show it on two cameras. So hopefully you can catch it. Um, I just have some a dead off to an I-beam above me here uh, with some shackles just to give me easy connection points. And then I just have a come along, um, a, a two ton come along. And the reason I have a come along versus a hydraulic ram or some of our other braking systems is just for these rope applications, it gives me a lot of ability to absorb stretch. So it's just a fast, easy way. It also allows me as the person doing the task to stand about 20 feet away, which is a, a nice uh, safety redundancy too. So I'm gonna go and tighten this up here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call out the uh, the weight I see on there as I see it, and I'll try to go slow when we get near capacity here. So, got about 250, 350, and you'll notice it stretches. So every time I go to my crank point and my thing, it drops. That's a lot of stretch in the amp steel and any of those synthetic ropes. 500, 600. 50, 800, and we're gonna get a lot of stretch. We'll see if it pops before I run out of stretch. Okay, I didn't see exactly where it broke, um, but let's see where it broke as far as what it broke. And what we'll see here, I'm gonna try to, in my, admittedly bad AV kind of way here. Let's see here. So you can see it broke right at the point it enters the um, not the, right where the bowl in and the bowl in actually tightened on the bolt. So you can see there's no space. That was an, an open loop there before and now it's fully tightened down. And I'm going to take out this next one from the base so you can see it. Now when I we can see this slipped a lot. When I tied this bowl in, I probably had about an inch of a tail. So that means this slipped a full three quarters of an inch and cinched down on there. We'll also notice that it recoiled on itself um, where you can see some strands broke before others. So the ones at the part of the bend that are seeing the most stress, probably the outside ones, or if it's the inside one feeling the opposite pole where you get a mechanical disadvantage, one of those are the ones that break first and some of the other ones that were um, on the looser side of that didn't experience the strain till later. And in fact, that might be the original end of the line there and might not have broken those couple strands at all. So the Boland did, the Boland did slip. Uh, it's a critical point and uh, Samson and uh, the other manufacturers will remind you about the danger of using knots. If we had done a half hitch, uh, it probably wouldn't have slipped or double half itch um, as much or if, if at all. So I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time with a clove hitch. Let's we'll see what we get there as the results. Okay. And the first time I do this, I'm going to do a clove hitch without the backup either, without the half hitch following it up. See if it slips through. So. All right, so we have a slow pitch here uh, with no backups, uh, no half hitches or anything backing it up, so it will likely slip quite a bit. Um, I will, for the point of uh, further clarity on this, I will measure my tail 
At the base, I have uh, about a two and a half inch tail, and at the top, I have about a two inch tail. So we'll see how that moves. Okay, we're at 250, 350, 400. So it slipped out at a little over 400 pounds. So the rope did not break, it simply slipped the knot. And what I'd like to do is we'll do the same one with two half hitches in it and see if we can prevent it from slipping. We did do a little wearing out on the rope a little bit as it rolled around the pin of the shackle. It did weather it a little bit. You can see some abrasions. So we might, might have a weak point there for failure. All right, so I just did, uh, all I did was add a half hitch uh, in each of these uh, just to see if we're getting any difference besides that 600 pounds we saw before. Okay, we're at 300, 400. I can see a lot of stretch. All right, so we still pulled out with one half inch on a clove. We still pulled out um, at under 500 pounds and the bottom slipped out. So we talk about amp steel and the slipperiness. That's the part we have to be very careful of. You know, we, we know that it's a slippery rope with the plastic that it's made out of and it can slip through those knots and that's where splicing for critical loads where you're looking at a, a much closer to a safety tolerance than 10 to one. Now, if you look at that, this broke um, at uh, 500, so rough, roughly five to one safety factor is where we failed our knot. So pretty close to what we would be using this for. So not a good way to do that in those high critical application situations. One of the other systems we use for um, uh, knotting this in applications where we have to move it a lot, where we can't splice, like for instance, the hospital application where I talked about, we actually go through a friction system. So we have a zero fleet ball, where four of these end up in one place, we go through a, a, a friction connection, uh, like a friction path, and then knot it with a figure eight and act like a stopper. And just like the pin rail or just like three dead wraps on a drum, that amount of friction area basically makes the knot hold a very tiny percentage and that even a, a low capacity knot can hold a huge amount of capacity for the rope. All right, so here I'm just doing a bowl and a half hitch and paracord. This paracord is supposedly got a tensile strength of 550 pounds. This particular batch that I cut up for this demonstration has been used. I wouldn't say it's been used badly, but it's used. Um, so we may see a reduction just in that. Um, we'll get some load under here. Now the thing with paracord is it is going to stretch, stretch, stretch. So we're going to see it here. Just stretch. 80, 90, 100 pounds, 180, 220, 273 pounds is where it broke. So with a tensile strength of 550, so 273 divided by 550, Ed, what's the um, D rating there? Uh, it's in the realm of exactly 50%. Certainly close, right? Now, what's super weird and fascinating, <laughs> what's super fascinating, I can't say in all my testing I've ever had this exact thing happen, uh, but it's quite peculiar. Um, it did break uh, before the knot, I'm sorry, uh, before the knot, but actually in the recoil, it, it actually untied the knot in the recoil, which is sort of interesting. I've never had that happen. That's some good luck to get that to occur. But the break point, uh, normally I have the other half of the knot to show you, but since it untied it, is typically going to be right here. And what you're doing is creating a mechanical disadvantage and, and fatiguing the rope, almost not dissimilar to like a flat bridle or something. As that rope goes through and around, you're pulling on that rope, creating like a choker. And that's what's derating it so much right there. And that's where that point right there is going to be stressed the most. <laughs> 